All right, my friends, welcome to episode 426 of Prof and Dev Play Games. My name is Larry, and over there is Anthony the Dev. He lives up there in Washington. How you doing, man? Pretty good. I think you mean 647. 647? Episode 647? Yeah. I messed that up, apparently. Yeah. What's, what's <laughs> the significance of that? I don't know. I was just flipping your numbers around. Oh, okay. I was like, oh my gosh, what, did I get it all wrong? What did I say? Yes. Did I say, did I say two? 46? You said four something, and I think we're at 226. I meant to say 226. Are you sure? You said 426. I'm pretty sure. Oh, fuck. All right. Well, let's. <laughs> <laughs> we're just whatever. <laughs> it's, okay. Whatever I said, the actual number is 226. Six. I, I mean, we had a. It was. I went in yesterday, uh, last week when we were after we were recording. Um, and I think we said that it was episode like 246, 245 <laughs> or something. And, but then I look in the back catalog of like episodes and I'm like, wait, that doesn't seem right. It seems like we skipped some. <laughs> but we had 223 and then 244 or two. I think whenever you mistyped when the last one that you put in. Oh, because I'm looking at my feed right now, and it says 222, 23, 24. I know, I fixed 20... it. Oh, got it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm on a... But I just it got was back still from fun. Vegas, I was like, man. numbers, whatever. It doesn't matter. We rolled in from Vegas today, so I'm a little, little yeah, out there of you it, go. apparently. This is episode 652. There you go. Uh, yep. All right. 226, Prof and Dev Play Games. This week, we are talking about games that are coming out in 2020 that we're excited about, and then a little bit about that Nintendo Fire Emblem Smash Brothers Direct that happened. Um, which, I mean, we'll start there, actually, because there's yeah. less to say about it. But you were excited about the new house coming to Fire Emblem. Uh, I'm excited, yeah. I, I clearly need to get the expansion pass, um, because now it's Fire Emblem Four Houses. <laughs> I know. Are they going to change the title screen? <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. I would so, love it if they did. So um, there's a fourth house below Carrig, Carrig Mon- Yes. Mon- and there's some yeah. more details on it. It's not, like, integrated into the main story. Okay. It is a separate storyline you play. And is it as long as the ones in the base game, or is it? I don't truncated know. In some they way? weren't. They weren't clear about that. Mm-hmm. Um, although I've heard now, with people I work with now who've played the different houses, mm-hmm. like they're somewhat different links. Hmm. Like uh, the Blue Lions, like twenty-two chapters or something, and the Black Eagle was eighteen when I finished it. Oh, that's interesting. So, like, it's not like you're playing... Clearly, you're not playing through the same story. Right. But they, they do truncate them where it, it it fits for the story being told. I so, wonder if the black, like, Blue Lions chapters are shorter and the Black Eagle ones are longer. Whether there's any... I don't know. ...sense of that. <laughs> um, no clue. So there, there's the, the new house, which is below the yep, monastery. Ash, the Ashen Wolves. Ashen Wolves. It's a good name. Good name. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and their color is white gray gray white yeah gray white ash colored i suppose um and then they announced the final fighter for the the current smash brothers uh dlc <laughs> uh sequence uh season of fighters and it is uh the, the main character from three houses byleth blyeth blyleth blah i always get his name wrong <clears throat> because it's hard was, for me to say it was byleth b-y-l-e-t-h byleth i, I like byleth what that uh, when Sakurai did the presentation, the name of the characters in Japanese were different for the different you know male and female endings basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like that. I wish we had that. I don't know how they got Byleth, but whatever. That, um, that we got that. Uh, I that, love that they made fun of themselves. Yes. Announcing this character, they're like, oh, another sword fighter, great. Fighter. Which is what what the 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 Smash Bros Reddit was just like. Oh my God, not another one of these guys. But they they switched where you change with the direction pad. I think uh, yeah. you change your weapon from an from like an axe to a spear to the sword and to, to the bow. Bow. That was it. That was the last one. So that I think that adds a lot of strategy to that character. But, yeah, it, it was more than I was expecting. It's just funny that it's a Fire Emblem character. Yeah, another Fire Emblem character. <laughs> um, but then they also announced a new pack which has six characters this time. Uh, yep. So a second season of uh, DLC characters that runs through the end of 2020, 2021. So that's okay. like the next two years. So that. So it's probably the last of it. Exactly. They'll probably do six more, which is still ridiculous to think of how many characters that is total. Basically, in the end. Yeah, three three a year for the next two years. Um, and then yeah, exactly. The roster is just astronomical. So there's, there's five in the first pass. Five. Yep. 
So whether it's 11 DLC, does that include Piranha Plant? No, Piranha Plant was not part of it, so it should be basically All right, six so and 12. six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's 12 additional characters to how many was in the base game, if you unlocked everything? Oh, 73, 74? So, Jesus. Like that. just, that's so many characters. The next Smash Brothers just has to like knock it back down to like basics. I don't know how they go up from here. They can't be an, there can't be another Smash Brothers at this point. Right, We're done. This is just this the is platform, it. right? This is it. Yep. We're done. Um, they'll just port this to whatever the next system is. <laughs> right. Yeah. Any any thoughts on who? Oh, you know, before uh, we go into prognostication, the uh, the me outfits. Um, oh for this my one, god! The fucking Cuphead one, man, was really really good. Uh huh. Like it, it doesn't even look like a me fighter. It just looks like fucking Cuphead shooting shit out of his finger. Uh, yep. That was like makes me want Hollow Knight now. <laughs> Like it just—it should happen at some point, I would think. It should. Like, I'm surprised to see Cuphead um, with yeah. that level of detail. Like, was that a big game in Japan? I'm not. I'm I don't sure know about that, but I, I was pretty excited to see that. I know they're Mii fighters and such, but still, it's a good way to get some characters in that are not going to have a main. Uh, yeah, entry. exactly. Um, so who's going to be in that six? Who? I I still feel like you're going to have Sora. You've got to have, I think. Yeah, King I feel like Hearts. we're going to get. Yeah, I think it's time to have some Kingdom Hearts in there. Um, I'm trying. I was trying to think if they pull in any other Final Fantasy characters. Hmm. Because they, who do they have? They have Cloud. They have Cloud. Is that it? Yeah. I can't remember if they. Yeah, I feel like it's that them working with Square and choosing another character to get in there. At least, um, honestly, it'd probably be another seven character. Yeah, that's the most just with the iconic. remake coming out and everything like, Eris or something. Yeah, I can see like Leon Kennedy, you're like a, a Resident Evil. Yeah, uh, probably a Monster Hunter protagonist. <laughs> you know, that would be they're, they're unnamed, so that could, they could do a. I could see them doing a Monster Hunter costume. Like for me. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Although Hero is, I mean, I guess the main character for. I, I mean, West, come but. on, Geralt, right? Let's do it. I mean, I fucking want that so bad. <laughs> Another sword fighter, just oh, a different I one know. this time. But he's got all his different powers. But that's that. I don't think that game is big in Japan. I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think it's big in Japan, and I have a feeling that um, they don't really want to touch that. Yeah. Um, I, I still want Tetraminos. Like, give us a character that oh, has Tetris God. blocks. That would be hilarious. I think um, they can do it. They could. I'm sure one of these is gonna be super off the wall, and so it could be that. Um. Just figure out okay. what games um, Sakurai likes that he can count on exactly. in binary. Um, it was a pers- really entertaining direct, man. It, it really is. I, it, <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. It was just like, it was funny. They're making fun of themselves. It was very lighthearted, yeah. um, which was great. Um, I just don't have a clue. There's going to be some character one. from like a, a game that came out for the NES that never came out here some main character that we'd never heard before and it's yeah. going to be great uh, do you think they do master chief i do i don't because I, I think they're they've done banjo kazooie and cuphead down like they're like skirting around like edge microsoft stuff right i think it's like, possible for sure and that would be like an iconic game character that's not in it yeah i just don't see it happening yeah um but i think it'd be rad if it did an assassin's creed character possibly like Ezio or Altair, because I mean they've done the crossover. Well, they just did the Altair um, Me Fighter. Oh, there you go. Never so mind. I think that's You're right. That was one of them. Yeah, that's the, that's their nod. Yep. Um, Which I thought that that Me Fighter looked really awesome. So. Yeah. Um, which other Final Fantasy? Oh, they could do like Kefka from Final Fantasy VI, mm-hmm. like the villain for Final Fantasy VI, or yeah. um, I can't. I'm blanking on the female protagonist protagonist's name at the moment but they could go there Tifa, they're very Eris. No, just kidding no no <laughs> um they're very uh tied to kind of the nintendo ecosystem yeah from old um yeah i don't know they, i mean they still have a wide swath that they could choose from and i'm sure they're just going to be fire emblem characters to be honest oh my so. god there's another fucking fire, <laughs> fire emblem character <laughs> the internet's gonna just burn down <laughs> give give me edelgard oh well, seriously like the the main at least they're in in the background but i thought the main characters might have been more interesting than byleth uh yeah 
Even Probably. though I'm happy to have a professor in there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and we get to play with him next week. So that's pretty God, cool. so crazy. Yeah. Like, here's the announce, and you get it next week. I like that. Um, I guess yeah. maybe Crash Bandicoot, maybe. Oh, uh, it's possible. Oh, yeah. it's like the Sony All-Star Battle Royale, whatever the fuck that was called. Yeah. It's not like they're doing it, though. So right. That's true. Um... Trying to think of and then oh Chrono. Still would love a Chrono. Oh my god, it'd be great, but another sword fighter, but still, yeah, give it to me. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Um I mean everyone still wants Waluigi. Yeah, I wonder if they're gonna upgrade him to be like a, a main character. <laughs> I don't Maybe. know what that would offer, but it would shut some people up, I guess. Um any of the champions of Hyrule from Breath That would of the be Wild? so awesome, but you I don't think you could do one without all of them. But I would choose Daruk. I would put Daruk in there. Daruk. <laughs> my, uh, my favorite. But it would yeah. probably be the freaking, uh, what's the fucking shark prince that people were swooning over that's not even one of the champions. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the keeps bugging you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think just from us talking about it, there's just so much they could actually choose from, which yeah. is crazy. Um for just the fact that, that they have they're going to approach 90 characters when they're done with this. Right. Uh, it's impressive. It's a, it's a damn fine game, so it's a, that's pretty cool that they're going to support it for three years after launch, basically. Yeah. I mean, it's what we always thought. It's the platform. Yep. They don't want to put out another another Smash. Like, right. this is the Smash that you play on Switch, and who knows? It might be the Smash you play on whatever the next thing is after the Switch. Oh, well, and they've done a pretty good job where it's 60 bucks for the game, and then you buy a DLC pack for 25 bucks, and you buy the second DLC pack for 25 bucks. Yeah. so you're basically paying 110 bucks for this game. Yeah. Over Worth a big it. chunk of... Yep, yeah, big chunk of time. Yeah. It's weird, because you're now seeing Nintendo really diving into the DLC path. Yeah. Like, deep. Um, but I feel like in a way that like is making people happy... Generally, like, I, yeah. I feel like we're a little bummed that we didn't really get like a couple extra worlds in Super Mario Odyssey, for example. Like they kind of didn't yeah. work that like they could have. Yeah. Because um, I mean, you're getting all the DLC from, of course, Smash is just like here. Here's a bunch of characters. Um, over many years, you get the Fire Emblem DLC, which has already released a bunch of stuff, right. and now they're releasing a whole new chunk of story and like as the final piece, new house and new. A new class, basically. So you get all the new characters, all voiced, and the whole the whole thing. Um, Pokemon, Sword and Shield, they just... Everyone was like... I saw a pushback on the, like, oh my god, they're doing DLC for Pokemon. Which, it's the game that fits it, the, probably the best. But it for the most part, it seems like they're not going to be doing, like, the second game revision. Like, um, back in the old days when it was, like, Pokemon Red and Blue, but then it came out with Yellow. Which right. is like the the upgraded version of those games, or newer one. Poke, there was Pokemon Sun and Moon, but then there was Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which are separate remake, like revamps of that original game, sold at the same price. Looks like Sword and Shield. They're just like here, pay thirty bucks, and you're you're now effectively getting the the revamped version of the game with hundreds more Pokemon, the whole thing. Right. And so it's like you don't have to buy another copy of the game. Um, but I saw people bum because they had gotten used to the fact that they never bought the Pokemon game when it first came out. They always waited for the revision. Right. Um, doesn't look like there's a revision coming. This is it's DLC, and they'll just sell Sword and Shield. All right. So then you've got to buy both of those things. Yeah. Making more money. Yeah, but fine. But it's cheaper than two games. If for the people that want to buy it now and then wait would have waited a year, right. two years to buy another sixty dollar game. Right. So Yeah, exactly. Um Yeah, I don't know. It feels like Nintendo's just really pushing into it. I'm wondering if this what this means for Animal Crossing. Yeah, what can you add? I don't know. Items. Well. Lots items, of items. Yeah. Oh, lots you're talking of about collectibles. Like microtransaction front basically. Kind of, yeah, I mean, or just like a big like chunk where it's like because it's all New Horizons is all like island vacation. You could yeah. just add a whole another island that you can go to. Right? Why not? <laughs> or like a Hawaii theme set or yeah, Fiji theme. Yeah. whatever. Yeah. I, I there's part of me that feels like they're gonna they're gonna try some stuff out in that game. Yeah. Um, well, they tried in the, the mobile app and that didn't go 
no. super well. Well, no, because that just felt like you were mocked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not monetizing right. your friendships. It was uh, <laughs> exploited. It was, it's so weird when games want to be that kind of social stuff or a social game like that, and you and it just comes across that you feel like you're just exploiting people. Yeah. Um, it feels really gross. Um, it was always a problem with, I, with a lot of later Facebook games where you wanted to invite all your friends to play it because you wanted them as resources for you to use so you could progress in the game. You're not your friends. Yeah, it wasn't. It uh, it was icky. Yeah. Uh, I, I did not like that aspect of that game. It wasn't all Facebook games or anything. There were some really clever ones that did some really fun social stuff. But um, but if you're talking about your Zingas and your really popular stuff, like, yep. You just want your friends playing so you can so you can tap them to get resources. Yeah, it's a pretty insidious business model. Yeah. Pretty gross. Yep. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not dealing with that. Yeah. <laughs> Out. Yeah, it seems like you've landed in a good spot in the dev space. <clears throat> uh, yeah, very much so. Um, which I forgot to tell everyone with uh, working at System Era now. Uh, you, there's a, a no-clip documentary on them. There is on Astroneer? Yeah. Oh shit! I highly recommend watching it to just get a sense of the the studio um, where you're at now, where I'm at, what the studio had gone through to get to where it's at. Um, um, how long ago I, was that? No clip. Uh, early 2019, before the okay. game hit 1.0. Okay. Um, highly recommend it. It's I had watched it when it came out and kind of forgot about it a bit, um, mm-hmm. but I recently rewatched it and was like, oh yeah. <laughs> um, there's a lot, a lot to the studio. Um, it's a really cool place to work, but it has some for a place that has only been around since 2016 ish, 2015 ish. Um, they have a, that's when it came into early access. So I bet they were around for a couple of years before that, but just as like a very small skeleton crew of people. Well, and they came together just to make this game, right? Or yep. this was, yep. The yep. Thing, you yeah. can watch the documentary. It was the, and it really was just sparked out of the, an artist who he would uh, Adam Bromo that was working at Ubisoft, mm. um, who did stuff for AC Unity and was a uh, art director on Watch Dogs Two, I believe. Oh, shit, um, that game is fucking rad. Tell I, him I, I love had, that he game. He had left. <laughs> I think he left before it came out because oh, okay. he he had just done some art of this like lonely astronaut exploring the the universe and passed it around to friends and they're like, we want to make a game of this. Yeah. And it was just the whole idea for the Astroneer, which just sparked off a couple pieces of art. Um, That's really cool. So, um, and it's really yeah. cool, like that the place you work at now started there and is now transitioning to uh, pre-production for The Witcher Four. It just blows. I know, mind. I know. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> the art style is going to be a little weird, but I'll get. Yeah. It. <laughs> Happy, cheerful Witcher. Yeah. yeah. Got to be so weird. Oh, it'd be great. Hmm. Mm, fuck. <laughs> speaking of speaking of great games that uh, we're looking forward to playing, yeah. uh, this episode we're going to talk about games that are coming out in all 2020 uh, that we are excited about. Some that have dates, some that have no dates, and some that have dates that have changed in the very recent yeah. past. <laughs> I assume uh, one of those is on your list at least. Yes. So I think we'll, I think we'll advance chronologically through the year. Okay. So maybe we'll just call out February through at least I think yeah. September is as far as we can go. Um, perhaps and then oh shit i didn't write one down uh and then uh we'll get to our tvds um there's one yeah. that i forgot to write down that should absolutely be on my list uh okay so why don't we go with february first anything in february for you not for me i got one uh tvd uh dark crystal age of resistance tactics oh right that comes out for seems like all platforms on february 4th which is i'm uh, curious to see what how it is that's all I, i'm gonna wait for reviews for sure um, but having uh, obviously Dark Crystal as a kid, but then watching yeah. at least part of the um, Netflix, the new Netflix show, and then Tactics. <laughs> There's yeah. a couple of Tactics on my list here, and I'm excited to see. It looked good from what I saw. I think it was E3 where they announced it. They did, um, yeah. And I thought it looked good, um, but then that's you know a short clip. So I, I'm waiting to see what people who uh, review games for a living uh, think about it. Uh, I agree. It's definitely. I hadn't thought about it. It's just one that. Maybe I'll get. We'll yeah. see how. We'll see what reviews have to say. That's 
You said this month, February? February 4th, two days after the 49ers win the Super Bowl. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Probably um, probably not, you know, not getting my hopes up. Um, yeah, the Chiefs are formidable, for sure. Yeah. Like they've, they've been good and been bad this year, so we'll see. Um, moving into March, I guess, then, huh? Yeah, March, um, I have... So these are things I don't know if I'm going to buy all of them or not everything here. I probably can't buy all but, of them. But this is just games we're excited about. So. Excited about. So uh, the first one coming out in there is Animal Crossing New Horizons. And I am working at a place again where I can have my Switch and we're going to have Animal Crossing lunches. And it's going to be great. <laughs> you did that with New Leaf, right? When you were at Pocket? Uh-huh. Yeah. Like 15, 16 of us sitting around the table in a bar just, you know, visiting each other's... Uh, different towns and trading and whole thing. Um, I totally got sucked into it. I saw what the, the, the draw of that game was at that point. Um, and I'm super excited to experience that again with another group of people. Um, and I at least know that there's seven or eight of us at system era that are like super excited about it. So it's going to be a fun time. Um, but it is the epitome of a game of going around and just collecting things. Right, the collectathon of all collectathons. Well, I guess Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon, yeah, that one. much easier than Pokemon for the collecting. Oh, yeah, that's good. And then going into debt to Tom Nook. <laughs> right. Oh, your soul. Let's to that let's let's, bastard. let's teach you about finance. Hey, um, no one else is. Might as well have been in town. Yeah, yeah. So everything I learned about checking, I learned about from Tom Nook. Um, <laughs> or and the other cards, I guess. The other one out of February that was like okay. Um, I'm gonna probably pick up at some point is Persona Five: The Royal. Oh yeah, I want to replay it with that new character and see what else has changed. Um, my opinion of the game has not changed over the years. So it's still one of the best you've ever played. Uh, yeah, for JRPGs, definitely. Yeah. Um, so very excited. There was something else in this month that moved. So yeah, we'll talk about that in April. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, so for me, I only have one for March, and that is uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Oh, right. Yep. It comes out March 11th, uh, Xbox, and I think PC at the same time. Um, be, I'm really close to beating the original Ori. I have, like, one level left that's just fucking murder, uh, so I need to keep plugging away at it. But it's just, I mean, fucking yeah. platforming Metro Va- word, Metroidvania yeah. that looks amazing. Uh, the art style of that game is really captivating. <clears throat> oh, yeah. It looks amazing. Um and then this one, like the new, the bosses, like the way they've done the new boss fights are just like really interacting with the background and the foreground. And yeah. Just larger than life. Uh, Pushing themselves on the art there. Yeah, uh, really are. I think before we move into any other month, I just noticed two notable ones that I'm curious about. I think we'll have friends who are going to play both of these. Uh, Neo 2. Oh, yeah. Travis is going to be all over that one. <laughs> and then Doom Eternal. Oh, yeah. And Brad. <laughs> Yeah. Is that is that slated for March? Yep, March 20th. There's wow. I mean, I, I hope for Brad's sake that And that Neo and Neo 2 is March 13th. Uh-huh. When Neo 2 is even one that I'm like, oh, I probably won't play it, but Did you pick up Neo with the um, PS Plus? I did. And okay. I need to go back to, and I mean, I was just had only played it during the beta yeah, and I, I was that. like, but it was definitely a, the the type of Soulsborne game where I'm like, oh, I can get into this. Just the structure yeah. of it, the more loot of it, loot lootiness of it. Um, I really enjoyed it quite a bit, um, but not enough to buy it. Yeah, so. maybe scratch the itch by going back and playing Neo. Yeah, uh, and this is definitely a lot of these games are probably ones that I'll be like, fine, I won't buy them now. I'll wait for the end of the year um, for Black Friday stuff. And Black Friday sales, woo wee! Because I don't cool. need everything all up front. Um, yes, there's more I'm than enough games things I to play. Three years yeah. Ago, so. yeah. Um, well, that moves us into April, which we yep. both got a big one on here. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Seven Remake, yep. Got moved five weeks. So it's but, April uh, 10th now, yep. right? Yep. Do you think it's going to stick to that date? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of Because uh, it's, it's only five, it's a, a very small move. Yeah. Um, I think they're pretty confident about that. Um, I mean, really, a delay of five weeks at that at this point pretty much just means that they could... They were likely some just rough edges and mm-hmm. crash bugs, performance bugs that yeah. they just need time to solve. Um, well, and that, I, I believe that initially worried you about uh, another game coming out in April that then it got moved. So, yep. So <laughs> hey, I'm already, I'm already 
got a point on the uh, predictions did. for the year. <laughs> I was not expecting to get it that quickly. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the quickest that anyone's gotten a point in our little game. Yeah. Um, anything else that is notable, at least notable in April? For me, uh, one, and it's uh, one that I, again, will wait for reviews. Basically, every game with tactics in it, I'm going to wait <laughs> to see what people think. Yeah. Gears, Gears tactics oh, right. comes out. April 28th, I believe. Yeah, I'm um, very curious about this one. Yeah, I haven't I've played very much uh, of Gears. I've only played almost all of four. I still have like three chapters left. Or no, it's like two. Like we just, my brother and I stopped playing because of scheduling, basically, and we didn't get back to it. Um, so the universe is interesting enough for me, but the tactics thing, I'm interested to see how that plays out. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll, I'll look for reviews for sure. Of, of this list so far, Ori and Final Fantasy VII are ones I'll buy yeah. day of. Seven looks amazing. It's... I'm just I'm so curious what the game actually is. Because mm-hmm. of course I know you're like oh it's this part of the game. I'm like it's a remake. It's a remix. It's riffing on the story that came before, but not completely uh, following it to a T, as far as I can tell. So I'm just really curious what they're doing with this. And I know most people are not maybe super jazzed about the episodic nature of this, but I'm stoked because I've actually played. Like, where I stopped in Final Fantasy VII was just a bit after where this one ends. Yeah. Where I think it ends, at least. So. Yeah. We think that's where it ends. Yeah, exactly. We have no yes. clue. Um, yeah. And then uh, next is May. I've got yep. two, in, two in May. Oh, I have one. Last of Us Part Two. Yeah, I got that one too. Hopefully, That's you'll have Brigus watch the story uh, for one yeah. by then. <laughs> uh, I already have. I'm caught. Oh, you already have. I, I know the story of one. Oh, you do? Two. Okay. Yeah, cool. it's fine. It's. I'm still like this is the thing we're talking about with coworkers, and it's going to be a beautiful, gorgeous game. Mm-hmm. Is it going to be too dark? <sighs> Fucking looks like it. It really like, does. Like actually, like. So the world's already basically on fire right now, and yeah. literally if you're in Australia, yeah. um, from politics to global warming, this everything is yeah. on fire and is kind of dark and depressing. <laughs> you want to play something super dark and depressing? That's actually something that's been weighing on me in terms of like the shows we choose to watch. Like just because the outside of our house is just like kind of dour, that yeah. we want something uplifting when we watch tv and watchmen so far is flirting with the edge of that (laughs) it does it's dark it skirts with the edge of it it has a pretty freaking uh i wouldn't say uplifting message in the end but it's definitely a very introspective look on uh society yeah now Uh, we're in a way that most things won't try to address yeah. ever. Surprisingly, my wife is pretty much on board with this show. She's All right. excited about the next one. We would have watched it tonight, but we were both just frazzled after yeah. Vegas. Uh, so you watched the first episode, right? Only the first one, yep. Okay. And it was started with a fucking bang, man. The only thing, my wife, just for her, she doesn't watch anything that has violence anymore. So just the violence, she was just like, it was hard for her to watch. Especially the cows getting shredded oh, by the, right. the machine gun. Is that also the one where they show uh, American Hero Story clip they, in that? They, they, they talk about showing it. previews of it, but I don't know if they showed a clip of it yet. Yeah, because that just it. It's the me in. You've read Watchmen, right? There's the yeah. comic within the comic. Yeah. In Watchmen, um, right. This the American Hero Story is kind of like the TV show within the TV show. Uh. uh and it does actually like thematically play a role in everything. It fits really well, um, yeah. but it it is hyper violent. Oh, okay, I'll and have... it's and it's, a, and it's <laughs> supposed to be because it's supposed to be a reflection of the media and how they will spin everything to be much more hyper violent than what happened in reality. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, I think I, I will. I told her that I'll just have her close her eyes for those certain things because she loves the story like she really likes the character so far like she's really like it's not weird for her like she's really like more into it than i thought she would be it's just the violence that just like takes her out of it Uh, i was thinking in the first episode the weird parts are more like hey look at there are little tiny squids raining out of the sky what's up with that (laughs) yeah she definitely was like what the fuck i'm like just just go with it (laughs) yeah pretty much and then the whole uh 
cutting to uh, the person who do know who it is now on the horse with uh, eating the cake and everything. Oh yeah, that was fucking weird. And it's gonna be weird for a while because yeah. I don't. Do you have a guess who that is? Not not a single one. No. Okay. I was pretty sure I knew who it was when I, when the person showed up. Um, uh-huh. But you'll eventually learn. You've read the comic, so you'll know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it I mean, it might be the yeah the the original Warshock, maybe. It's a guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, it's that that part is just weird, um, yeah. and it will just be these little vignettes for a while. Yeah. Um, well, this was short, so I was like, okay, I I know they're setting something up, so we'll get yeah, back to it, this. And this is the thing with the show; it does take it it sets things up for a while, and they're good okay. episodes, but it really all the threads are are all there, and then it's really only the last couple episodes that they really all come together, and you're that's, like, holy yes. shit, like that, it all makes sense. Well, it's nice because as I'm watching, and I. I've heard someone else talk about how it wraps it up at the end because I know Lindelof is running it. I'm thinking, yeah. okay, you're setting all this shit up and you're not going to tie it all together, but it's good that he does. He does I guess he said he's awesome. not interested in coming back either. No. Because yeah. um, he wasn't sure if he'd ever want to do a second season anyway. Like, yeah. So, uh, and I'd be very happy if it doesn't get a second season. It doesn't need right. it. It's fine. Um, it but again, I would have said, I would have said, Watchmen comic doesn't need a sequel of any right. type. Um, right. And I guess it still didn't need it, but I'm very happy we got this. Yeah. So So it could be the same thing again. Yeah. It's not necessary, but if it was done at the same quality bar, sure. Yeah. Why not? But uh all right. Uh well, thank, last, <laughs> thank you everyone for joining our Watchmen podcast. <laughs> so Last of Us Part Two also falls into the it could be pretty dark and depressing yeah, and totally. hard yeah. to put yourself into whenever you might be upset or depressed around the, the world around you so yeah, it's hard to like stack more trauma on yourself if you don't yes. really need to yeah um yeah you know, it's definitely the the art that you seek i think sometimes people like to wallow and have things that match how they're feeling but not fucking me i like to have the opposite like if i'm happy like i can do depressing stuff if i'm depressed i do not want depressing stuff yeah uh yeah uh, the other one in may that gets got me interested is one that also just got delayed iron man vr oh yeah it did uh, didn't it yeah, I got delayed in the May May fifteenth. Yep. Um, and I think it looks pretty darn good, so I'm 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 interested to see it. Uh, you know, that's the only way you can really tell how the VR games go is by actually experiencing it yourself. Exactly. So. And that's a PlayStation exclusive, right? Yeah, yeah, PSVR yeah. exclusive. Yep. Yeah. And uh, then I have nothing until September. <laughs> neither do I. Like, okay. there's nothing dated as far yeah, as I right. can tell after May. So, well, until <laughs> September. And what's in September? Cyberpunk. So, yep, there was the delay. What's uh, five months, basically? Yeah, yeah, because it was coming out in April, right? Yep, yep. Five I, I just I'm now looking at my list. And I'm realizing in the um, the show notes that I preloaded well, before we got online, yeah. I wrote Cyberpunk 2020 all over the, the <laughs> description, but it's 77. I'll have to go fix that. I, I mean, that's still my thing. And I figured if it was delayed, it was still coming out this year, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they, they want it. They want it. it to be 2020. They yeah, want they it to come out it for that date. But the stuff that's come out of like, they're going to be working really hard to get it out in that time. I'm like, just don't actually, just just delay it for how long it realistically would take to get it out and not kill your employees at the same that's, time. CD Projekt Red does a bad job at that. Pretty hard. Yep. It just bugs me on that regard it's like yeah and their financials are all public they make plenty of money yep like the la they they hadn't put up q4 of 2020 because that's they, those books wouldn't be done yet but they have q3 of 2019 yeah they made like 28 million dollars of profit <laughs> so, i'm interested to see what their q1 2020 is after the witcher show a witcher show yeah it's gonna that Around it's Christmas, spike that, sales yeah, games. Exactly, I'm like that know, might even be Q4 last year. Yeah, it's gonna be good for them. They're not running out of money, so that's part of me is like, I get it. People are gonna be upset if you delay it for a long time, but I'm also like, just be realistic, please. It would have been nice if this delay they would have done it more than five months. Um, really, you know, push it. In. I don't know if they want to avoid the the fall 
glut of games, but pushing it even to like into November or December. Yeah. Uh, who knows? They might. I mean, Witcher Three got delayed twice. Um, yeah. It got. So I was going back to that. It was originally supposed to be out fall of 2014, and then it got. They were like that date can't, was approaching, and then they delayed it to February, and then they got into January and they delayed it till May. <laughs> um. So the delays equal best game of all time. Perfect. So kind of back. sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah. Of course it does. Like, yeah. And yes, Cyberpunk is just huge. I'm super excited for it. Um, but I do not need it now it's okay if it's later and better I, i'm the okay with people's yeah. health yep being a game dev yourself i think yep. you get that yep uh burnout is a real thing and, yeah. and there's a lot of studies now showing the ill health effects of uh long work hours and crunch it's yeah. very bad very bad for you well it's diminishing returns it's after diminishing like what eight yeah. hours nine hours and there's that um there's higher blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, there's all sorts of actual physical health problems that come from it. And so it's just not good. And then beyond the burnout, people leaving the industry, right. all that experience from those people that just leave and never come back. Like, uh, go, go fucking code Excel and then like have a you know better work life balance and yep. make more money too, probably. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so it's unfortunate, but yeah, I'm still looking forward to it. And it's like right before my birthday now. So happy birthday to me. I know. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I saw that. And I was like, all oh, right, Anthony's birthday. He's going to love it. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I have nothing else the rest of the year that's dated. Yeah. I have a bunch July. of TBDs now. Yep. I have um, like six TBDs. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> um, so why don't, why don't you do your six and I'll do mine? Yeah. So in alphabetical order, uh, Boyfriend Dungeon. Oh fuck! I forgot about that. <laughs> I fucking cannot wait for that. I'm yeah, gonna so date bad. my weapons so hard. <laughs> it's gonna be great <laughs> uh, if it comes out this year. I hope it does. I think they've said it's going to be this year, but I couldn't find complete confirmation on that. So I'm like super aiming for it, even though they might miss it. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, it looks awesome. I'm up for a dungeon crawler where you <laughs> date your weapons. Why not? Um, I like that twist on like the, the the dungeon crawler, making it a dating sim as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know about that. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of indie stuff that yeah. is. I'm sure that will come up throughout the year that uh, we haven't mentioned. Uh, but the next one on alphabetic order, uh, Industries of Titan, um, which oh, is being done by that? Brace Yourself Games, who did Cadence and Necrodancer. Um, Industries of Titan is their, uh, well, you, you play, uh, an industrial, I don't know, you're on the moon, Titan, the moon, so it's yeah. Industries of Titan, and it's a kind of like this weird, uh, city builder voxel thing, um, where you're, I don't know, you're kind of like this great house of, of Titan that you're trying to, like, so it's strategy, sim strategy game is I think what they called it. Huh. Um, it just looks really cool. They've been working on it for years. There's no rhythm aspect to it at all. No. Oh, no. Interesting. Oh right, that puts the other one on the list. I'll just go with both theirs because they also have another game coming out this year called Phantom Brigade, which is a tactical mecha game, but it allows for. Um, how would I explain it? Um, it's hard to explain. You have to watch a video of it because it's not just like turn-based. You you plan out your mech's movement in a timeline, okay. <laughs> and you play it out like you I I want them to do this thing, but they can get shot at and hit, and it can deflect from their path of where you want them to go. So you kind of like pl- the longer your turn time goes on, the more chaotic it might get. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I they I saw it played at PAX and it looked really cool. Um, so uh, there's a trailer. I'm not doing a good job explaining. It. It's really, it's a really unique, it, yeah, really unique tactical RPG. Um, and yeah, it's with giant mecha. So weird that they have. I don't know. It's funny if they did Cadence, they did Crypt and Necrodancer and Cadence, and they have these two pretty different games coming out this year. So. Um, 
uh, I'm looking forward to those. Um, with my son, I'm looking forward to Minecraft Dungeons. I get asked probably every couple weeks, when's Minecraft Dungeons coming out? And I have to tell him we don't have a date. Um, but he is super excited for it, and he wants me to play it with him. So And it looks good. It does. We played. I, I, I played it, it at PAX. It was good. It's like my first action RPG, but has enough depth there that it was entertaining for me. Yeah. So, um, and I, I mean, we played it on the Switch at PAX. So, yep, I'll probably play it on Switch. It'd be great. Um, next one is the, an old game that's finally coming to the West, and I have to probably at least try uh, Fantasy Star Online Two. Oh right. Because uh, I play the shit ton of Fantasy Star Online on the Dreamcast. <laughs> and 2 never came west. No, this is the first time it's coming west. Interesting. And I'm yeah, sure it's not going to be great. Uh, <laughs> or maybe it will be. I don't know. I mean, it was the first thing to do the 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 multiplayer. Online, right? Online, multiplayer, like, looter, basically, right. before it was a thing. Um, and people rave about 2, and we just never got to play it in the west. So... Uh, Yes, please. Um, I'll at least try it. I want to. I want to see what what's so special about this one. Um, and then uh, another game that was delayed that doesn't have a date right now. I think these last two are similar in this way. Is Bloodlines Two? Oh, Vampire yeah. Bloodlines Two. Um, right. That's supposed I, to come out the Q one, wasn't it? And it was got... supposed to come out February mm-hmm. originally. Like end of February, yeah. right. and it's delayed till later in the year. They haven't even given a date. I have a feeling it's fall sometime. Uh, That's kind of what I wish um, Cyberpunk would have done. Just like we're delaying it to you know Q4 or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then similarly, Watch Dogs Legion. Yeah. Which may or may not be this year. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I wish it were, but I hope it is. But based on recent Ubisoft earnings reports or whatever, they're like we need to go back to the drawing board and really figure out some of our games maybe they're going to give it extra time yeah um extra extra time i guess but the thing is they haven't dated it at all like yep. or they had dated it right and then they just dropped it completely they did they did it they did it for march I think. yeah um but it's then they said no we're yeah. just delaying it yeah it's pretty ambitious and it, you know exactly that's the key thing i'm like this this is an incredibly ambitious uh system you're trying to build here um Take the time again. That's just going to be something that's going to take a decent chunk of time yeah. to do to do right. Um, so, nah, it's fine. We'll see. It's pretty pretty good list of stuff. I would. Yeah. Say. Uh, for me, uh, I, I've grown mine one more since we've been talking. Um, let's go. It's not in any order here. Elden Ring, if it is coming out in 2020. Um, I'm not a super big fan of the Soulsborne kind of right. games, but I'm I am a fan of a Soulsborne game somehow written with or Martin. whatever uh, with George R. R. Martin. Um, Maybe so if I, you I'm, buy it, he'll finish Game of Thrones. Dude, that fucking. <sighs> <laughs> Ugh, I just I can't even. Man. You can't. You can't. No, I I don't think I've understood the power of that phrase until right now. I can't even. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm interested in Dying Light Two. Um, okay. Based on the strength of the writing, I'm not I'm not a big fan of zombies, but Chris Avalon I think did most of it or all of it. Um, so I want to see what that storyline, uh, see what the reviewers say about the storyline. If it's you know top story of the year, it's one yeah. I'll play. <clears throat> Next two games are games that have already come out for a different system, but they're coming out to Switch this year. One's CrossCode. Um, oh, I really want yeah. to play that this year. Um, the other one, and I'm going to predict that when there's an actual Nintendo Direct this month or next month or whenever, uh, this will be announced and dropped that day. Throne Breaker, which is the um, basically uh, RPG with uh, no uh, the Gwent. Uh, Gwent, thank you. Gwent as the mechanic, uh, the battle mechanic. It's like a twenty-hour adventure, yeah, fully voice acted. So I want to know Geralt's story from that uh, on my Switch. Uh, next, I'm surprised you didn't say this one because I don't unless, unless I miss didn't hear you say it. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, yeah, I could put. Uh, never mind, I just missed that one completely. <laughs> But that's definitely 2020. But I just, just don't know when. Just, yeah, I just missed that. I'm pretty sure it's... Fall. Their fall game. Fall. Uh, fall or, like, honestly, it might be around the September-ish time frame. Honestly. Because yeah. they don't want to probably launch it right next to the PS5. Okay, then that should be earlier, then. That should be maybe even August. Yeah. Um, so I think they just said they were doing it summer. Mm. 
Oh, yeah, that's right. They did. So it could be anywhere up through September. Yeah, but then whatever. May is Last of Us because that got bumped. So I bet, yeah, July or August seems I'd probably. say July is a good spot for that. Yeah. yeah. July, August. Um, Halo Infinite. I am excited oh, right. about checking that out. In the fall. Out. Yep. Well, it's supposed, yeah, it's supposed to be the launch with the Xbox. Yep. Um, Watch Dogs Legion, obviously. Um, Hollow Knight 2, Silk Song. Maybe. Uh, I saw that on the list. I'm like, is that maybe, really coming yeah. out this year? Really? I don't think so, but I'm going to put it on here just in case it does, so I can look back and say, I said it. I wanted it. Um, AC Ragnarok. I don't think that's this year. You don't think that's going to come out 2020? Uh, it might be. You're right. It might be the. Um, uh, I mean, they could. They could do the whole reveal at E3 and say hey, it's going to be out this fall. But yeah. Again, with the whole Ubisoft pulling back a little bit and reevaluating uh, right. what they want to do, they might hold. I can see. I mean, why not? They're making money, I guess. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. They're, obviously they're a money, giant they're... company, so it's hard yeah. to say. Their burn burn rate is probably very high. Yeah, that's true. I gotta get shit out there to recoup. Yeah. Um, and the last one is a game that I actually just like discovered a couple days ago. Uh, Carry On. Have you heard of this game? Um, coming out for PC and consoles this year, and it's basically they, the, the developers called it a reverse horror game where you play as the monster basically. Huh. And you're you're trying to like uh, basically capture players and kill them. Um, and then as you do, you grow and gain abilities, and then you're able to open up new areas of the map. So it's basically a Metroidvania where you're a monster in a horror film. Um, pixel pixel side-scrolling kind of Oh, game. I'm totally looking at the screenshots now. It looks hilarious, actually. Yeah, it looks... <laughs> and I, it's I'm in not, a super violent way. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I'm not a big fan of horror games, but um, this one has... I'm, I'm slightly interested. But they reverse uh, the horror. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you're... <laughs> Delighting in killing them or whatever. Yeah, we are the the humans are the real monsters in this game. Yeah. Oh, and uh, so those are all the games in 2020 that uh, uh, have my attention so far. Oh, uh, obviously there are going to be games. Like there are no, there are no Nintendo games on that list, um, and there have to be Nintendo games coming this year for me that I'm excited about. That um, besides Animal Crossing, I just don't can't think of any off the top of my head besides Animal Crossing. Uh, what have they announced really? Not much anything. There was the... No, I think there's the Animal Crossing and then there's that uh, Pokemon spinoff game that they just announced at the Pokemon Direct. Um, Mystery Dungeons, I think. Yeah, Mystery Dungeon DX. They announced that. Oh, right. But I mean, that's that's not a huge... That's not like a main Nintendo Direct thing. Um, is it Breath of the Wild 2? Do they hit the fall? Do they do that in the fall? They do Breath of the Wild 2 in the fall. They absolutely fucking could. They could, really and they that could. would be really, a really good game to go up against in the new hardware coming out. You're like, you can buy new hardware, or you can play Breath of the Wild 2. Huh. But, um, yeah, their, their year is pretty light on so far, yeah. based on what they've actually announced. Um, right. That doesn't mean they won't have a bunch of good stuff. E3, they might have stuff to say come out and. Well, I mean, they just do their directs. Like their directs maybe happen in a couple weeks, probably. So. Yeah. Um. What do we got? Animal Crossing. Uh. Yeah. Doom. No. No. No more. Oh. No, that's not from. I'm looking to see if there's anything. First party developed Nintendo. The only thing I can see that hasn't been announced that we know exists is Breath of the Wild 2 and Metroid Prime 4. And that's fucking not coming out this year. That, that, those are the two first party games that they have talked about but we don't have release dates for. So, who knows? Man. Yeah. They've got to have more. Obviously. Oh, I'm sure. They're a big enough company yeah. and they have enough dev teams. So, yep. I don't know. But man, now I really want Breath of the Wild 2. God damn it. I could s- totally see that coming this year. Yeah? And I can totally see him delaying it for two years. So. Exactly. <laughs> it would be either one. Uh, and I mean... Yeah. 2020 games, man. There's uh, a lot coming out. Yeah, I mean, that's the, this article that I said. Nintendo hasn't confirmed a release date for the upcoming Breath of the Wild sequel, but seeing as no other big first-party game scheduled for 2020, we could probably see it, see it sooner rather than later. Yeah. Right, like... Open a big hole in their calendar, that which they have right now. Drop that anywhere in there. Don't drop any other game. You're fine. <laughs> Just have that one game. Pretty much. 
I did hear a rumor about a Mario Odyssey sequel. Like, if they didn't do DLC, that could be a they possibility, could, yeah, I guess. Yeah, they could just do a whole sequel to it. You have know, uh, another fucking year where it's Odyssey uh, it's Odyssey 2 and Breath of the Wild 2, basically just Zelda and Mario again. Done. That was a great Why not? fucking year, man. Why not? That was a great year. Let's do it. Fuck yeah. So, yeah. Good um, to me. I feel like 2020 has now spaced out, though, which is nice. Um, well, with all these delays, they're yeah, quite nice. I'm just like, yeah. oh, okay. I'm not looking at March, staring down March and April being like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can actually just get a game in March and a game in April and be okay. Um, yeah. Jeez, though. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a pretty good list for both of us. Yeah, I think there's so. a ton to look forward to. My my fucking to be red pile for this 2020, like new books coming out this year, is just like double the length of the games. It's just like so much to read and so much to play this year. It's gonna be a good I year. I think I have a new book coming. I think I ordered it, and it's I've had it pre-ordered forever. It's a new William Gibson novel. Uh huh. Oh fuck! I knew it. <laughs> uh, I believe. Yeah. It arrives on Tuesday. <laughs> Oh, damn. There you go. The agency. Or, no, not the agency. 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 Um, Fuck. Yeah. Um, He had to rewrite this entire book, for the most part. It's two years late. Because Trump won. And it was... Oh, he had to rewrite big portions of it. That's uh right. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. Huge. And he said, as he... Because he gave an interview a couple weeks ago... Um, to the New Yorker, I believe. It was a really long, detailed interview. And he talked as he was even rewriting it. He had to scrap stuff because the world was going to shit. <laughs> and he was like, he couldn't write things crazy enough for what the world was throwing at him. Right. Um, and so he's just like, been trying to catch up with just how insane everything has been for the past few years. Um, because it matters for... for uh, these it, it's kind of a semi sequel to his last book, um, The Periphery. So they, it deals with like far future and the current time, but twisted mm-hmm. slightly. Um, I don't know. It's a very Gibsonian take on perspective on the world, and uh, I can't wait. Tuesday, yes, it's so good. I'm so excited good. now. Good timing. Uh, yeah. Feel okay. <laughs> Uh, back to gaming real quick. Yeah. I'm going to give a special shout out to my cousin who I got a little notification in the corner of my computer that says my cousin is playing Final Fantasy 14 free online uh, uh, demo. <laughs> he was texting me earlier about uh, different MMOs he wants to play, and I was like, "Don't start an MMO, dude. Just no. don't." He's like, oh, "I, I, I want to play. I'm going to be very responsible." I'm like, oh fuck, dude. Oh fuck. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> don't, don't do it. There's Sounds... no, there's no responsible with an MMO. <laughs> He's checking out Final Fantasy fourteen right now. Oh. Um, it's a good one. It is, yeah. That's what I said. Uh, whoa boy. Good luck. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, that's episode whatever number. I think 226 of Prof and yes. Dead Play Games. Uh, check us out on Patreon. Search Prof and Dead Play Games. Uh, we're also on all of your podcast services of choice, so please rate us there. Let people know how we are doing. And my cousin just got offline, so maybe <laughs> when I called him out on it, he bounced. I'll have to see. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll see you next week. All right. Later, everyone. <laughs>